Lesson 1-4, angles. An angle, and this is what it looks like in when I type it, is a figure formed by two rays with the same endpoint. So it looks like this. A ray has only one arrow. And to define a ray, we need some points. So this would be angle A, O, B, or angle B, O, A. Another way that we could notate an angle We put these little numbers in between them. So angle one is the same thing, and that means congruent, more on that very soon, as angle A, O, B. Angle two is the same thing as angle B, O, C. Simple enough. Can we call this? Angle O. Yes. You say angle O, I know what you're talking about. You can just name it in the vertex. Can we call this angle O? No, we cannot. And I'll leave it to you to figure out why not. All I know is it's one of the most common mistakes I see in the first unit. People say, oh, that's angle O. I don't have to, I can be lazy. Don't be lazy. Always call it AOB, BOC, angle one, angle two. It's just smart. You can even write in the numbers and use them going forward. So angle definitions, acute angles between zero, call it X, and 90. A right angle, 90 degrees. An obtuse angle is between 90 and 180. And sometimes we put the degrees in, sometimes we don't. It is totally up to you. It does not matter at all. And a straight angle equals 180 degrees. One of the keys I tell people when they start geometry is that the answer to most questions is 180 degrees. How many degrees in a straight angle, which is just a straight line? Just 180 degrees, could call that. The measure of angle BOA equals 180 degrees. We just call it a line, whatever you want to do. So, remember we talked about Euclidean geometry. Built this thing up from the ground up, but couldn't prove things until he made some assumptions. That's what a postulate is. We're already on postulate three. And a protractor postulate, it's all written down. By all means, read it. Just means if we have an angle similar to the ruler, I can take a protractor and just build it right in there. And I'll call this zero degrees. I'll call this 180 degrees. I'll call this 90 degrees. And we'll say this was 50 degrees. We would just put it right there and say 50 degrees. Usually we call this O, but not always. A and B have been using, let's just use something else in front of it, R. So we would say the measure of angle R, O, S is 50 degrees. You'll play with this, it's not a hard concept. What is strange, you've already been put a little bit in the box as I've mentioned, with 180 degrees, sure, 180 degrees, whatever you say. Well, where does that number come from? And some people say, well, it's 360 degrees in a circle, so that's where 180 comes. It's half a circle. Yeah, okay, great. Where'd 360 come from? It's a good question. You should try to figure that out and let me know. Email me, text me, tell me in school, whatever works. Well, where did that 36 number, 360, come from? It's a good question. And then we did the ruler postulate previously, and then we add them together. Same thing with angles. We can add angles together. So if point B lies in the middle of an angle, because if it was out here somewhere, it would blow it all up. Oh, it's not. 
we'll call this uh, P and we'll call this Q and I'm going to be lazy I don't feel like writing everything out so I'll just put a 1 and a 2 in there so measure of angle O Q O P equals measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2 that's all the angle addition postulate says I can slap numbers on them and then I can add them up and I should have used these letters here but you know I'm lazy This one's a little bit stranger. We say if AOC is a straight angle, A O C, that's a straight angle by definition, and B is point anywhere on it, B, then these two add up to 180. So you can just break it up. Again, notice sometimes we use degrees, sometimes we don't. Don't get hung up on it. It really doesn't matter. I've already said that we have congruent angles. So measure of angle 1 equals 32 degrees. Measure of angle 2 equals 32 degrees. We can say this two ways. The way I've been saying it is measure of angle 1 equals measure of angle 2. The perfectly equivalent, you can just flip them back and forth without explaining why is to do this. Congruent. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. It means it has the same measure. It's the same angle. I can spin it, turn it, flip it. It's still going to be the same angle. Measure of angle 1 equals measure of angle 2 means I measured them, found out they were both the same. Another way of saying it. It's the same thing. This freaks people out, but it's not a big deal. What are adjacent angles? Angles that share the same ray and the ray is on the inside we we'll call these angles three and four angle three is adjacent to angle four notice I didn't say the measure of angle three is adjacent that doesn't make any sense angle three the actual angle three and angle four share one of their end lines is the same ray so they're adjacent What's an angle bisector? Oof, that's terrible. Not much better. Again, I'll use some different numbers. 5, 6, O, M, P, L. Uh, Ray. Actually, I don't have to write that out. O, P, is an angle bisector if it cuts it in half. To be able to cut something in half, we have to be able to measure it. So, OP is an angle bisector if measure angle 5 equals measure of angle 6. Lots of definitions, and you get to go do lots and lots of math problems, some better than others, just based on all this information. Good luck.